Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So recently I put a poll out asking if you guys wanted me to do a studio tour and over 90% of you guys uh, said yes. So I figured that's what I'm gonna do today and I'm gonna keep this sort of like a more vlog-like format. Um, and yes, it is cold up here in Canada right now. So I am in my cozy house coat and I'm just relaxing today. But I figured I would just take you through my room and um, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do today. I hope you guys enjoy it. So first I figured I would just do a big sweep of the room so that you could see everything and then we'll go from one section at a time and kind of get a closer look. But this is what my room looks like from the corner of the room. And the first thing that I have here is this cart. Now I got this cart from Michaels. It is a three tier cart. And then I actually got these little bins at Ikea to add on. And I think I got this organizer here at Michaels as well. So what I have in here is just some extra pencils and stuff that I have. So I keep a lot of my black and white pencils here so that they're easily accessible while I'm drawing or doing whatever I'm doing over there. Um, I keep a lot of my Prismacolor Cola Erase pencils in here. Those are really nice for sketching. Uh, apparently I have a random brush in there. Um, I've got some extra Prismacolors and just random pencils in here. Um, I've got some Holbein pencils over there. I received those in uh, an art box and I haven't actually gotten any more Holbein pencils. They're just a little too expensive for me right now. Um, and then I've got my masking film right here that I use with my um, pastels a lot. I've also got some graphite powder and some charcoal powder that I want to try sometime. I've just got some random markers in this spot here. So this is some Posca markers and just different markers that I've received. And down here, I've just got some boxes and things that need to go in the garbage. So um, I used to use this printer, but I didn't really print out a lot of things. So it's finally just kind of stopped working. And I'm actually looking at getting a scanner so that I can start scanning my artwork and uh, creating some prints or offering some prints. So look forward to that in the future if you're interested, but I just need to get that stuff in the garbage. Then I've got some liners over here and some different gel pens and stuff. And then I've got a lot of the watercolor brushes that I use uh, the most right here. So it's really easy to access while I'm working. Um, I've got a lot of my silver black velvets. I've got some Princeton Neptunes and then I've got some uh, water brushes here and just different things. Then on the second shelf here, I've got my swatch cards for my watercolor sets and just a piece of glassine paper here. But I like to have all my different brands on different swatch cards so that I can grab them and look at them very easily and uh, can see the colors really easily. And I usually just keep my piece of glassine paper there so that I can grab that while I'm working um, so that I'm not touching the paper. And then I've just got some more um, boxes and stuff here that needs to go in the garbage. Then this is the chair that I use the most at my desk and I got this from Ikea also. It's actually a really comfortable chair and it moves really well on this floor. Um, so I do have a carpeted floor, but I've never found that it's been an issue and I can kind of scoot back and forth between my desks if I need to. Now under the desk, I just have a little foot thing here um, and I prop my feet up on that when I'm at this desk. And this is my main desk here and I'll go over this in a second, but um, that's what I have there and I have the power bar. And then under there in that bin, um, that's sort of my giveaway bin. So any products that I get from art subscription boxes or anything that I'm not going to use, I put in that bin and I'll do another giveaway when I reach um, a thousand subscribers, which hopefully should be soon. So that's what that is. And then on my main desk here, um, right now I just have my water and my tablet, but usually my tablet's up in the tablet holder when I'm using it. I've got some brushes here. So these are a couple more brush holders just with random brushes. So this is more like watercolor extra brushes that I don't really use as much right now, but I like to have them out because every once in a while I do want a big brush or something. And these are more like Simply Simmons brushes that I'll use for either gouache or acrylic. I've got my water jars that I use with watercolor. 
tablet holder, and then that's just another jar um, that holds a spritzer and a little pipette thing that I like to use to put water on my palette. I've got my microfiber cloth here that I use um, for watercolors a lot. I've got a little color wheel that I like to keep close. I've got a TV over here off to the side so I can watch shows or YouTube um, when I'm not doing voiceovers. I just recently got this Harry Potter calendar set and this new um, Harry Potter pop figure here that I have to get out and put on my shelf, which I will go over afterwards. Then over here um, above this little Ikea drawer system here. So this is the Alex drawer system. And then up here on this little thing, I just keep things that I grab a lot. So I've got my sharpeners here. Um, I've got my lip chap my putty eraser, um, some paper towels, some Kleenex. Um, I've got this little tree that I got at the dollar store and I got the tree and then I got the bulbs and the lights separate and I sort of put it together so that I have something Christmassy in here. And then I've got my candy cane candle going as well. And then I'll just do the top of the desk and then we'll go into the drawers. Um, but this blanket here is either for me or when the dogs want to uh, come in here. They'll sometimes lay on that blanket as well. I've just got um, some new papers here that I want to try out. So I want to try out these black papers. I'm currently using these Liquitex uh, Basics paints to do some coasters here. So just some little Christmas coasters. And then over here, um, I've got some clay stuff that I've been working on. So this is air dry clay. And it's just going to be a little picture of me and my husband and the dogs. So here I am, and I'm going to be painting <laughs> over there, but I've got it all done. I just need to go ahead and paint this. So this is going to be little Gizmo. This is little Gotham. And then the cat on the cat bed, because he's always on his cat bed, which is just right down here. He's not here today, but... Um, that's where he usually is. And then I've just got these drawers here and right now they're empty, um, but I wanna transition my colored pencils into these drawers because I think it would be easier to just, you know, come along and open them up and grab whatever um, colors I have because right now I have them in these binders, but I'm thinking I might transition to that. And then I've just got some random stuff up here. So like palettes, um, cloths, uh, different books and stuff like that. Now in the drawers over here, um, this is stuff that I've reached for the most, so I like to keep it handy to me. So in this top drawer, I've just got some different tapes, um, washi tapes, I've got rulers, I've got this big brush that I use with my colored pencil pieces just to, you know, brush off any um, dust or any little pieces of pencil that's on the top so I don't scratch it. I've got just different things down here like scissors, um, I've got some different exacto knives and things to get uh, like pages off of uh, blocks, like watercolor blocks. So I've got a couple of tools for that. Um, and then I've got all of my sketching stuff in here. So I really like these mechanical pencils, um, these two here. And I think I actually got both of them in uh, an art box. I've got uh, an eraser, but I really like to use my putty erasers um, better. And then I've just got some pens and stuff here and this knife that I don't use a whole lot, but apparently I kept it there. Um, so that's what's in that drawer. And the next drawer here is where I keep my Gamsol and my paint brushes for that. Um, in here, it's just some different like little binder clips and things, my remote for the TV. And then I've got my um, brush and pencil uh, touch up texture and titanium white um, and I've actually got <laughs> a backup of that as well back there I've got my electric racer and some like little extra erasers and I've got my woodless uh, graphite down there that I'll run through my pencil sharpeners every once in a while just to keep them nice and sharp um, and I think that's extra woodless graphite there as well and then I keep little pieces of glassine in here too and that's what I'll use to mix up my touch-up texture and titanium white with and then in this drawer I've just got extra little scraps of paper that I'll keep 
Um, and then I can use these to color swatch or to write down the colors that I'm using for tutorials or whatever, just so that you guys have a complete list. So every time I grab color or whatever, I try to write it down as best I can. Um, then I've got my backup electric sharpener in here. So I used to use this one. Um, this is the Office Pro one um, before I got my um, Derwent Mini Super Points, which are my absolute favorite now. Uh, but I still keep this one because every once in a while uh, a lead will break off in one of those. And instead of just trying to like open it up right then, like if I'm in the middle of a tutorial, I'll just switch to using my electric one again. And then it's fine. And then I've got um, some masking fluid in here. So I've got different brands. Uh, this one's got a really fine tip to it. This is the one I use the most is the Winsor & Newton um, masking fluid, but this one's tinted yellow. So you can see when you put it down, I've got the regular Winsor & Newton masking fluid. I've got this um, incredible white masking fluid and the Daniel Smith one. I think my favorites are still the Winsor & Newton one. I've never had them rip um, a paper at all. So there's that. I just have this um, container here where I keep this. So this is what I use to take off my masking fluid. And I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but it came with, I think, this masking fluid here. And uh, it's like a piece of rubber and it's really hard, but it does a good job taking the masking fluid off. So I just keep it in there to keep it nice and clean. And then down here, I've got my backup Derwent sharpener. Um, I've just got some different things. So this is the grayscale um, thing. So you can like check, you know, against your work to see how light or dark something is. I've got a little stencil for holes. This just has extra pencils and drawing stuff in there um, just for sketching and whatever. I've got a little sample of some artist tape here. And uh, these are little clamps that come with the Derwent Super Point Minis. And you can clamp them onto your desk, but I don't use them because I like to move mine around. Um, and then I've just got some cotton swabs back there that I don't really use that often. And then in this drawer, I just keep... Um, some documents in there, different things, and I like to keep my pencils in these trays when I'm working on a project so I can keep it all together in there. So that's what I use those for. Um, over here, I've got some little drawing boards that you can use when you're on the couch and you can like put them on your lap. And then you have a nice sturdy surface. This one actually has a spot for a cup, so either a drinking cup or water if you're using watercolor. So if I wanna work downstairs or something like that, I will pull um, one of those out. So over here, I have this heat tool that I use and I've just recently gotten this. And I love it because I can use it while I'm doing tutorials and it's actually really um, silent. Like you can hear it a little bit, but it's pretty silent here. I'll turn it on right now just so you can here like it's pretty silent and I really like that um, so this is the Ranger heat tool and I'll try to have it linked down below but I really like that um, in here I've just got some different puffy paints and stuff that I don't really use as often anymore um, I've got my hair dryer over there that I'll use for acrylics and then I've just got some extra microfiber towels there that I can use for watercolor. If uh, one of them gets extra dirty, I'll just pull out a new one and I just wash them. And then over here at this end of the desk, I have another little Alex drawer set. So this helps hold up my desk, but I do have a pole in the back of this because this desk is pretty long. Um, so I didn't want to risk it like sagging or anything in, in the middle here. So I did um, put a pole at the bottom there. Um, just to help it hold up. But in these drawers, I keep uh, my pastel stuff at the top here. So I've got all of my pastels swatched out. I've got my Carbothellos here. My pit pastels are actually in these, um, these little containers here. I've got a couple of extra pastels over here. And I keep my pastel paper under there. Now these are the small pastel papers. I have a bigger um, drawer with bigger pads in it as well, but I kind of prefer the smaller ones because the bigger ones I end up cutting down as well. 
um, because I don't like to draw like super big or anything like that. So I really do like these um, smaller pads. And I think these are nine by 12, I believe. And then in this next drawer, I've just got some different things. So this is my newest uh, gouache set. So this is the Him Himimiya 24 gouache set. I do have a review of this on my um, channel. Um, this is my little puffer for pastels. This is what I use to wash my soft pastels and my brushes. And then I've got some acrylic gouache over there that I need to try. And then in this drawer, I just have different random gauzes and uh, hand wipes and stuff like that. And then this is the screen protector that I like to use for my tablet. And then in this drawer, this is the um, old heat tool that I used to use and just some different random things and some makeup bags. And then down here at the bottom, this is my other gouache set. This is the, so this is the Himimiya 24 set. This is the Magic Fly 24 set. And then this is the Mia 56 set. And I keep the Magic Fly and the 56 set down here, um, but I've got all the swatch cards together. Okay, and then over here, I've just got some of these shelves lined up next to each other. And again, these are Ikea shelves, but um, on this one over here in the corner, it's just random like makeup stuff and uh, palettes and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna go through that because that's not really art related. But um, on these shelves here, I've got my different coloring books down here at the bottom. And I used to use these a lot more before I got into doing like traditional art. So some of these books are from um, Coloring Haven here, and these what, and this was a subscription that I had. So you get one of these coloring books every month. Um, but I've since canceled that uh, just because I don't color as often now. Um, but I still have some just random coloring books that I've kept. Um, I really like these ones. So I'm just gonna slowly pan over them and you can pause and look at it if you want. But I really like the um, Morphia books. And then I've just got some random sketchbooks here. And then if we go up one shelf, I've got some different watercolor paper pads. Um, I've got some Canson Me TNs. I've actually got quite a few of them here. I've got um, just some random watercolor paper pads, some Stonehenge paper, some Arches hot pressed, and a couple of Arches cold pressed. Um, oh, this is the Strathmore watercolor paper, and uh, just more little small Strathmore watercolor papers, and what's that one? Oh, the Canson XL. Then I've got another Canson XL, and this one I actually use for my swatches. So I've got all of my swatches for colored pencils in here, but I'm thinking of redoing them um, because like I said, I do wanna keep them up in here. So I'm thinking of just doing like a big swatch or maybe not even doing any swatches at all because I typically just end up grabbing whatever pencil that I want, um, but that's where I keep that. And then I just have a couple random watercolor blocks under here. So this is the Academy watercolor block. And then I think that's the Paul Rubens one. Yeah. And I really like both of those, um, but I was just recently using them. So that's why they're here. Then I've just got random like paper and random watercolor pads. Um, a lot of this here was sent in art boxes. So, I mean, I don't use a lot of this. Um, but I've just got it here because I kind of just <laughs> haven't put it in a place yet. Then up here is a lot of my drawing paper. So I've got a lot of Strathmore paper. I've got a lot of like Bristol Smooth paper here. All three of these are Bristol Smooth that I use with my Copics. Um, I've got some different like Copic paper and uh, just different paper for that. Um, this is where I keep my colored pencils. So I've got my Polychromos, my Prismacolor, my um, 
Caran d'Ache Luminance, and I've also got my ink tents in there. And then I've got my Albert Durer watercolor pencils from Faber-Castell and my Derwent watercolor pencils in there. Um, this is a set of little graphite pencils that I don't really use. And then I've just got some different art books here. So I've got realistic portraits in colored pencils, draw portraits in colored pencils. One of my goals for next year is to get a little bit better at drawing portraits. So I've got that. Then if we go up another shelf here, um, this is where I keep a lot of my different products. So I've got like my Gamsol, I've got some Gesso, I've got my Texture Fixative from Brush and Pencil, um, I've got the Krylon Fixative, I've got the Mona Lisa Mineral Spirits, I've just got a whole bunch of different Gessos and different like paints and stuff like that. I've got um, two of the pink soaps back here because that's how much I like it. <laughs> um, so I've just got stuff like that. Uh, this little spray bottle actually holds the uh, Spectrafix fixative. So this here, um, I keep it in the spray bottle just so that I get a much finer mist when I'm spraying that. Over here, I've just got this cute little Harry Potter uh, pop figure duo thing. Um, then this is actually a clay thing that I did probably about a year ago. I think this was either one of my first or second videos of the channel. This was um, from Smart Art as well, and I made this little clay um, thing. So that's what um, inspired me to do this one. Um, so I'm hope hoping that I will get this one done for Christmas so that I can give that to my husband as a Christmas present. So up top of that, I've just got some more pop figures here, and I'm just going to step back so that you guys can just get a little um, view of that. So I do like to collect some pop figures. Um, especially my Harry Potter ones. I have a lot of those. And then at the very top of the shelf, I've actually got some more uh, figures up there, as well as some more pop figures on the top that I like to collect. Um, just some cute Disney ones. And then I've got some cute little stuffies there. And some more pop figures. Um, and I really love Mulan, so I like to collect some of her stuff as well. Then underneath of that, I just have this cute little uh, tea set that I have here and just some scented tea lights and different things. Um, these are some cute little racers that I got in a subscription box. I think it was the Smart Art one, um, but they were just so adorable. So I had to uh, keep those out. Then the shelf below that, I've got my Copic markers. I have a little um, acrylic canvas here that I did. So that was my first time trying a um, first time trying acrylics. Then I've just got some random different boards and stuff down here that I've gotten in subscription boxes. And then actually this was, uh, I was playing around with the Mungio pastels, um, just seeing how they mix and stuff. And I drew out this picture. So I'm going to be doing that for my um, Mungio pastel reviews. So you can see those down there. Then underneath of this shelf, I've just got some more watercolor stuff. So I've got watercolor papers, I've got watercolor sketchbooks, um, other sketchbooks that I like. I've got the Paul Rubens oil pastels, which I don't know if I'm a huge fan of yet. I, I'm going to have to try them again because I tried them once and I didn't really like them, but I'm going to give them another go. Then under that, I've got my ink tents blocks, and then I've just got a big arches uh, pad of cold pressed paper here, or this is a water block actually. And then I've just got some more water blocks over here. So I've got um, Academy, a couple of cold pressed, a hot pressed, an arches hot pressed, a bigger Academy hot pressed. Uh, this is the Paul Rubens hot pressed, uh, more Paul Rubens, and then I've got more arches cold pressed. And then down here, I've just got um, just some random stuff. So I've got my Tombow watercolor pencils, just some cheap, no name watercolor, or sorry, not watercolor pencils, watercolor markers, um, no name brand watercolor markers, which are not the best. Um, then I've got just some extra alcohol markers here that I was trying out. Um, I've just got a random blanket and that and then the shelf over here on this side is just more random stuff. So I've got some purses, I've got some books, 
And then I've just got some extra art supplies that I just leave there because I don't really have any place um, to put it. So I've got like some different things that I want to try out here. Then I've just got some random magazines down here, um, puzzles that I really like. And then I've just got some extra workout gear that I used to use uh, when I went to the gym. But I haven't really been back to the gym in a while because of COVID. Um, so I'm doing more like at home workouts. But I mean, obviously, I can't use a lot of that because it was meant for gym equipment. So it just lives there for now. Then over here, I do have more art stuff. So on the top here, I have my glass palette for acrylics. Um, and then I've got the wet palette down here. And I just use this like scraper here to scrape off. Um, the acrylics because it's glass so that just will scrape it off um, but I usually just keep it there until I'm done with it um, I've just got this puppy pad that I will put underneath when I'm using acrylics or something just because I tend to be super messy I've just got some extra brushes here that I was using with my acrylics um, and I like these filbert type brushes I've got a little water bucket but I actually recently just got this bigger water bucket down here off Amazon and so I think this is going to be much easier to do that with my acrylics. And then in this drawer set here I've just got different things in it so we'll just go through it. Um, I've got different swatches, different papers I've been trying out. So here I've got different pastel papers that I've been trying out just to see what papers I like the best. And um, this is the pastel mat, which was my favorite. Um, and just different like little swatches and stuff. Then down here I've just got random uh, papers of things that I've, you know, tried or tested. Um, Again, different swatches, different swatch cards for different paints and stuff, but it's just sort of like a drawer to throw stuff in, almost like a little junk drawer. Then down here, I've got artworks that I've completed, and I just keep it in a drawer like this. Um, now my pastel stuff, I keep separated uh, between pages of glassine paper, so that's in a separate um, book, but... This was a recent one that I just did on the channel. So this is a real time tutorial of this flower if you wanna see it, but I've just got different, um, different things here that I've done and I keep it all in there. And then, oh, this is where I have my pastel stuff right now. I just keep it in this tracing pad um, just between sheets of glassine. And then I've just got other bits of paper here. And like if I've cut up my arches paper, I'll keep extra in here and I keep extra blocks. So you can tell I really like this Academy paper because I have a bunch of it. Um, then in here, I've just got random stuff. So that's the clay that I was using to make those little um, clay figures. And let me see what it's called here. So this is uh, Sculpey air dry clay and this works really well and I keep it in a Ziploc bag and then I keep it in a container just to keep the air out of it and I've had this for over a year and it's um, still workable it's really good I just have some random palette knives and the legion um, paper pack and I was playing around with some of the papers here trying it out so there's that and then in here I've just got some different um, porcelain palettes uh, just different palettes that I like to have that I can use. And then under here, I've got my pan pastels and I've got just some extra pan pastels. And then under this, I've got my um, new pastels. I've got a 36 set of that, which I don't really use a whole lot. And I've got my Faber-Castell 24 pastel set here. And again, I don't really use these a whole lot. I typically stick with the pan pastels and I can get most everything done with that or the pastel pencils. And then this drawer, I'm not gonna go through cause that's just sort of like a little junk drawer. I've got um, just different things in there and it's quite a mess. <laughs> so this is another art cart that I have here. This is also from Ikea. I forget what this one's called. I don't think it's an Alex drawer. It's something else, but I'll try to have names or things down below if I can think of it. If not, leave a comment and uh, ask me to link it for you, and I will. But I really love this drawer set. It's it's big, and it holds a lot. But on top here, I've just got this um, 
random container. I have a lot of my paint in it, um, like just watercolor tubes and stuff like that, but I've taken a lot out and put in my closet over there just because I have a lot. Um, I've got my Caran d'Ache palette here, and this is nice if you're using like watercolor pencils or Neo Colors too, because you can scribble them on this and then you can uh, take a brush and wash them out and then use it like a palette, you know. I've got some Etcher hot pressed and cold pressed postcards here that I want to try out. Um, and then I've just got different little random paints and uh, this cute little pop figure that I want to paint. I've got this pillow here that sometimes I'll put um, on the back of my chair if I need like some extra support or something. Then I've got all of my watercolor palettes here. So I've got, uh, I have Winter and Newton, I have Daniel Smith, I have M. Graham, I have my Cotton, Cotman palette around somewhere, and then I've just got extra little palettes there as well. This is a blank palette that I need to fill up, and I want to end up putting up all my favorite paints from each brand in this one, I think. Then I've got this super cute um, pillow here. So this is like a body pillow, and it's so cute. I found this at Walmart, and I'm not actually sure where I'm going to put it or what I want it to do with it. But it was like $20 and I just thought it was so cute. So I picked that up. And then I've just got this random stool here that I don't really use. But <laughs> So in these big drawers, um, this one I keep my soft tools. I keep just different brushes um, for graphite or different like blending tools. Um, a lot of these tools I'll use for like masking fluid sometimes. Or these are extra brushes that I can use with my Gamsol. Odorless mineral spirits, um, just a random piece of paper towel. Uh, I try to keep my paper towel until it's used up. So I don't just use like a little bit of a piece. I'll try to keep using it. Then in the next drawer, I've got like different paint stuff. So here I've got the um, Copic Opaque White. I've got the PH Martin Bleed Proof White. I've got a couple of extra Himimia Whites. Here, so some of the packs, it comes with two in them, so I take the extra one out and just leave it here. I've got my Winsor & Newton Gold and Silver Ink. I've got an extra little Copic Opaque White here. This one came in um, a box, a subscription box, and so I just never opened this one because I already had this one opened. Um, but I actually like the Bleed Proof White better than the Copic White. Then I've just got some random little brushes back here. And different bottles that I got on sale and never ended up doing anything with yet. I've got different watercolor brushes back here. So this is the watercolor brush pack that I use the most. Um, I only really use three brushes out of it the most. The smallest round one, the biggest round one, and then the biggest flat one. So I've just got the other brushes in the pack there. I've got a couple of new pastels in here that I tried. And I ended up really liking them so I bought more. And then I just never ended up using them. This is my little palette that I use for my gouache. Um, and I've got my Ink Tense White here as well. And then I've got all my black and white gouache here. So I've got Winsor & Newton and M. Graham. Those are usually the two that I use the most. Um, I've just got an extra Neo Color 2 Orange here. I've got these um, Perfection watercolors here. These are from art philosophy and I'm not actually a huge fan of these these are kind of like quite chalky they're just cheap watercolors but when I was first getting into watercolors I ended up getting this and I got the Medine ones and I'll show you these ones here um, these ones are kind of nice they're bright colors but again they're they're quite chalky like they're a little bit chalky um, but you know they're cheap but it has a really nice palette I actually really like the palette so that was nice um, and then just playing around with some different swatches. I've got my Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2s here. I've got these really pretty um, like metallic type paints here. It's the gold and silver ones. And I want to use these for something, but I'm not really sure what. So I don't know. I'll try them out sometime. And then I've just got um, some cheap, uh, a cheap paint set back there that is too hard to pull out so I'm not going to. I think that's actually the Artist Loft um, watercolors back there that I tried and again you know 
you kind of get what you pay for really so when I first was trying out watercolor you know I wanted to try different cheaper brands um, and then obviously I went to some better brands and I mean I would stick with these any day <laughs> so and then the next drawer I just have random stuff here that I've gotten in either subscription boxes or that I've paid for so I've got different um, these are watercolor inks I've got acrylic inks. I've got the Holbein five set gouache here. I've got this little acrylic um, painting that I want to try. So this is like a paint by numbers. Um, I keep this paper in here because if I'm doing like acrylics or if I'm doing something where I don't want to get my desk messy, I'll just use this and I'll uh, tape whatever I'm doing on top of it. And then I can keep my desk nice and clean. I've got some charcoal supplies over here that I really enjoy using. And then in this drawer, I've just got extra stuff. So this is just sort of like a drunk, a drunk, a junk drawer, just full of extra stuff. So I've got extra Prismacolors, um, blending tools. These are paint pucks. I've got different brushes now. I was trying out these Arteza. These are eraser, eraser brushes. And I like the Faber-Castell Perfection erasers way more than these. These don't really do anything at all. So yeah, I still have those, but... Um, then I've just got extra erasers. I've got like pencil holders back here, um, different ones of those, different pencils. Um, I think I've got some pens, just different like little things. I've got my uh, Derwent watercolors and my Faber-Castell watercolor graphite pencils, um, just different things. So if it's something that I think I'll use uh, from an art box, I will put in here. And then every once in a while, I'll go through and pull out things that I haven't used and I put them in the giveaway bin. And these last two drawers, I just have random things. So I've got my paper cutter. I've got some cute washi tapes, um, just some different folders and stuff like that. I've got my light box that I don't really use anymore. Um, and then I think I just have the box for it underneath of it. But that's that drawer. And then this bottom drawer, this is where I keep all my big paper pads and then just some extra um, pastel mat. So I actually got this set. It's a five pieces of pastel mat and this is nine by 12, I'm pretty sure. And so I bought this little trial set just to try it out. And then I fell in love with pastel mat. And so I ended up getting um, some more packs of it. This is my transfer paper, so I like to keep white transfer paper and then regular graphite transfer paper. Um, this I actually got at the dollar store. It's supposed to be like slip proof, and I was going to put it at the bottom of all of my drawers, but then they're so packed full anyway that nothing really moves around, so I ended up not using that. I've got some cute little Christmas washi tapes in here that um, I like to use because they're just really cute. Um, and then here, I don't know if you guys want me to go through the pads. Maybe I will. So this is the pastel mat. I'm just going to push my chair out of the way. I've got the Hannah Mule um, cold pressed watercolor paper there. I've got some Arches cold pressed paper. This is the Medine Academy watercolor paper. This is hot pressed. And this is, I think this is a 12 by 16 no, this is a 15 by 10, 15 by 10. Now, one thing I, I don't like about these pads, so this is a block, but one thing I don't like about these watercolor blocks is their numbers are really weird. So, you know, a 15 by 10.2, like you're gonna have to cut it down to fit it in a frame or get a custom mat or custom frame for it. So that's the only thing I don't like that, whereas arches, you can get it in like an eight by 10 or a nine by 12, 11 by 14, you know, um, so yeah, it's, that's the only con I have about these, but I can cut it down, no problem to whatever size that I want. Um, then I have this big Canson XL watercolor paper, and now I actually don't use this for watercoloring. I use it to flatten out my paper. So I have a video showing that if you're interested. So any paintings that I have that's buckled and stuff, I will wet them, put them in here, and um, compress them down so they're nice and flat. But I would check that video out before you do it, just so that you don't end up ruining your paintings. I've got this um, Fabriano 
watercolor paper and this is more like student brand watercolor paper it was on sale and i wanted to try it out i've got the hot pressed here and the cold pressed but if i'm being completely honest it's definitely not my favorite um, it buckles really bad and it doesn't take washes nicely and the hot pressed paper it doesn't really take a lot of layers so i kind of regret buying them and maybe it's something maybe i can cut them down and like put some in a giveaway um, actually that would be a really good idea so i could cut some down because i can't really send a box this size uh, just because it would cost me too much but i could always cut them down into like eight by tens or something like that and maybe send them in a giveaway if, if it's like a water-based or pencil-based medium so maybe i'll do that I've got a big pad of tracing paper here and I really like to use this. Um, I will sketch my image out on this and then I'll transfer it on to whatever paper that I'm using. Just that way I don't get eraser marks or I don't get like um, if I push too hard with my pencil and then I can't erase it and then you've got the pencil showing in your final artwork. So I use this a lot for that. Um, depends if it's just a small little image and I know I don't have to do a lot of erasing or correcting. I'll just draw it onto my normal paper. So then I've got this palette paper and to be honest, I don't really use this either um, because I have that glass palette now. But um, I mean, I guess this is okay, but it dries really fast on this. And then I've just got a couple of bigger pads of uh, pastel mat down here. So I've got, this is different colors. It's like a cream a yellow, um, a dark gray, and a lighter gray. And then I've got just one that's all white down here. So I'll cut these down. I sort of, these were on sale. So that's why I got them really big like this, but I kind of regret getting them this big because I still have to cut them down because there's no way, you know, I want to do a piece that big. And especially if I was going to do it on camera or something, it's hard to get paper and your materials, you know, all on camera together. I, I would be so far away. You wouldn't be able to see anything. So um, with this white one, I was just cutting it down before I got those smaller pads. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give a like and make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. And thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.